Greetings everyone and welcome once more to Galactic Civilization 4 Supernova. The game is finally out into version 1.0 and received another major update. Time to dive into it once more with all of its improvements like complete English voiceover, new events and also introducing the new terror stars, a new endgame tag that causes enemy stars to go supernova. This is a sponsored video by Stardock Entertainment and I'd like to show you new gameplay in this Let's Play series. Before we dive into the game right away, if you're interested in Galactic Civilizations 4, have a look at the link in the video description to learn more about it. Let's dive into a new game of Supernova. Um, last time we dived into it, we played as the Luxor Dominion. Uh, this time I would like to go for humans again, but not the um, Tehran Alliance that we had, but this time the Tehran Resistance. They're based on individualism. They're still carbon based so we reproduce with food um, and with that we continue onwards right away. We have a lot of settings to choose from in this game. Um, each civilization has its strengths and weaknesses. We for example are unrelenting so we get plus 10 control um, and planets also generate one more influence per month which is great for fast expansion. And we can also now choose our ship colors, our home world, refuge is going to be cold. Um, we can decide on the size of everything, on the galaxy difficulty, the game pacing. We're going with a large galaxy size this time around. A uh, number of sectors is just normal. Everything is just basically normal to find out a real balanced uh, gameplay here. For the available opponents, we're also going with what the game suggests here. That is a few predefined civilizations we're competing against and then a whole bunch of random ones as well. The game is huge, so we're probably not going to find all of them, but at least with some of them, we're going to make some nice contact. They are friendly or warmongery. I don't know yet. These are the settings. Let's dive into it, shall we? Go, 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 go. Alrighty, and this is it. Here we are. This is the beginning of everything. Ground zero of a glorious empire, hopefully. On refuge, a planet, a core world, our core world right now. A class 23 planet. So class 23 means it's amazing. It is big, right? Class zero, for example, is a dead world. Class one plus our habitable planets that we can settle on. And class 23 is just amazing. Just the right planet really for a core world. We are, well, we're open this star here Proxima Centauri that is our solar system that we are in right now and if we zoom a bit further outside we can see that we're not the only solar system we actually have a whole bunch of these star systems surrounding us and when we zoom out a bit further we can see that we are actually part of a star cluster where well the whole game here at the beginning takes place where we also probably find a lot of hostile empires perhaps also some friendly empires and definitely also a lot of mysteries to unravel and if we zoom out further we actually open up the galaxy map and we can see that we are not the only star cluster map but there's others that we can find and we are not that far away from the center whatever mystery lurks over there i have no idea what i know is that we're starting here and we need to get cracking um, right here in this tiny cosmos and we can see that we have three ships available we also get a ship um, the shipyard over here where you can actually build new ships so I would like to start with that we're going to make a new probe immediately so we got these four starter ship designs available right from scratch and I'm starting with the probe here um, we already have one probe these are amazing for exploration nothing else they can do but they've got a great range um, surrounding them and with that I would like to start um, we have these star systems and of course our first goal right now is finding new habitable planets that we want to settle on and expand our empire on I don't even know all the planets in my solar system yet but that's easy and close so the probe is good for long range exploration right and let's just have a look around here real quick and yeah this is probably a safe location for my first exploration and as we can see the moment I move the moment I discover new things some asteroids here we also find a class 2 poor planet this is actually a planet with a very thin atmosphere um, there is something over here another class 2 poor planet so these are very small ones Class zero dead world that we have this is the star Murga and Murga oh Murga actually has two very nice planets. One is a class 19 excellent planet, a desert planet. 
that we will probably settle on really quickly and also here a well an extreme colon uh, extreme condition planet so this is a very dangerous planet to live on high pollution so we need to get the right tech for it before we can settle on this one for this planet here murga 2 i would like to use uh, my first colonization ship that we have so the colony ship here ready for action right one pop on board so every one of these needs a pop right and there is now one here robbie dan and we can kind of like say there's a million people on board or let's say a hundred thousand for each pop um and they go out there with high expectations this is actually moving down or yeah toning down their approval rating and they also say taxes are too high now let's get them over there to this burger 2 class 19 planet for us to settle the probe in the meantime is continuing with its um exploration then right over here it's right here in the in the starter right now and i would like to continue with moving over here because we still had some movement points left next up we have my flagship now flagship is usually not great for exploration right because it is slow it does not have that many movement points also there's nothing really surrounding us that would be great for exploration so let's start with it and yeah analyze anomalies and artifacts and there is one of these artifacts are powerful relics of lost civilizations they are rare but give valuable rewards and a flagship is just perfect for that because it can research those artifacts. Looking nice and dandy. Now don't forget we are still in the first turn so there's still a few things that we need to set up. First let's also have a look at my resources tabs. Up here we got some income and some money. So we have 1500 credits available right now and an income of 5 credits per month per turn that is. Um, we also have zero control increase right now and 130 base control we got some food that we need to expand quickly on because my population of course needs food so we need to grow um durantium is a special resource hypersilicates and modules we can use these later than for special actions um let's also start with our first basic research now we only have two available right now subspace scanning and the colonial policies this one actually unlocks me then the civilization screen that's a very important tax so let's go ahead and start with this it's only taking one turn and then we can finish it let's also jump into my plan planet yep that's right every planet actually has a planetary screen and here we can then manage this planet we can see for example that we got five pops living here right now and in 14 turns we get a new one that's my current growth rating they're not that unhappy right now uh, some of them are entertainers like they're producing money for us some of them are just normal pops that we can work on any kind of district that we want we got some basic production right now of 6.4 some basic research basic income and basic food production that we however also consume then again right away and influence that we generate with that so every colony that we have generates influence that we can use to increase our um, area of influence uh, on the map let's just check it out we do need to get the first buildings up and running and that's the capital city this is a pretty important one it is increasing the um, level of all adjacent tiles by plus two so this is really powerful and it also gives me another gross income of plus five and another population cap that we can use let's go ahead and find us a suitable location for this uh i think up here would be good because we got some tiles surrounding it some manufacturing as well that we can use them so capital city off you go in this tile here we also got the capital main frame this is great for researching allows us to jump start our research it's a civilization achievement building and so it gives me a point then and also gives me plus three level to research to any kind of adjacent district and what i can see is here we got these three research tiles so that's the lakes the tundra and another tundra so this is perfect for researching um so let's place it in the center because around it we're going to have some research districts that are getting boosted by that so i definitely want to use this last but not least we got the industrial center um this one is great for industry for um, increasing level of manufacturing and military in its surrounding area so we have the capital up here the research here so to me it makes kind of like sense to have then my industrial center kind of like down here we do get actually quite a lot of surrounding tiles right so those four that we can use 
we don't necessarily need to do some researching here, right? So I can still go ahead and get me a manufacturing district on this tile here. It's just a plus one bonus. These two here already get boosted by my capital mainframe, so I can have safely my industry area somewhere else because we still will boost them. And there we got then those four tiles that we can boost. So that's manufacturing, that's researching, and that's also some population boosting. Some money, yeah, uh, some food we definitely will also then need with our agriculture districts. Right now we still have a nice comfortable surplus, so I don't need to worry about this for too much. Quite the construction that we are starting now here on this planet before we dive then deeper into the districts themselves. We have to wait some nine turns, so that's going to be fine anyway for a while. I think we have the foundation for everything and we can actually finish our first turn. Let's do this. All the other civilizations take their turn. We have increased our influence sphere and we have also finished our first research now, the colonial policies and unlocks the civilization screen. With that, we also get some new policies that we can unlock and we also unlock new research that we can then go ahead with this. Um, yeah, we have then the research districts right away that we could go. Um, we could also go for subspace scanning. This gives me more ship space or ship range space and also the Eye of the Universe quest line. It's interesting. Uh, let's go for research district though first because we definitely want to point or push more into research as well to, to speed that up as well. Now with this, we have unlocked something else and that is my leaders screen. So the civilization screen here that we have now. And you know, there is a lot to start with in this game in the beginning. So stay with me. It's every, everything here is necessary and it's going to, to make sense at some point. Um, we have some recruitment to do here now because we get ministers that we need to assign. Three ministers are open for the beginning, right? There's going to be more than later on, but these three are important. They're for colonization or growth rating, for technology and research and for exploration. So we need to find us now some leaders that actually make sense to this. We got one available with good research and growth or social skills. This one here has better social skills. So we are also going to purchase her more or less, Emily Jones for 289 credits, right? And then I would still need someone with exploration and that is Maria Millen. She's also pretty good. She's actually expensive, um, but she's got some great exploration skills. So I would like to use her. And let's assign her to this and with her we get now plus one range move for every ship and plus eight ship range so this means i can take a longer distance away from my planets um on top of that we have the technology uh, this would then be sam tirui she actually doesn't like me that much with only 38 approval rating and she gives me now plus one random tech that we get every turn and also some eight percent research boost that we get flat out and then Emily Jones for my colonization. And with her, we get a flat 9% approval rating in addition, right? So approval is very important, especially for taxations and growth rating and working conditions then as well. Some basic leaders for my first basic positions. One more thing that we have also unlocked is the civilization policies. And here we can see, we can already go for some taxation now. Um, if I, for example, raise my taxes, we lose approval rating. If I lower them, we gain approval rating. With medium setting, we're kind of like in between, of course. We're making a nice profit of nine credits per month right now. And I think this is fine for the moment. Uh, we can also go ahead and uh, assign the first policy to my civilization. We got a whole bunch of them available. I think right now I do really like the reproductive imperative. Our species has never had a problem replacing its numbers. However, recent events have made it clear that we need to greatly increase our growth. This gives me a 100% growth rating. It, however, also costs me two uh, credits permanently on maintenance. So let's go ahead with this. We can easily afford this, right? 100% uh, growth rating is amazing because we definitely can get more numbers out there and colonize our planets faster. All right, I think for now it's safe to end the turn. There's not that much more we need to do. Yeah, it's still going to take me one more turn to reach Murga 2. Nope, there it is, perfect. And we can colonize this planet and also get us the first colony outside. And with the establishment of this colony, we have taken our first steps into the galaxy. Our colonists represent everything which makes our people great. And with that, they'll have every chance of thriving on this new alien world. 
The flowers of a specific Great stuff. plant on a planet whose name is yet to be mentioned serve as a And there's a drug on Murga too. The drug derived from these flowers bestows an intense sense of satisfaction to all those who consume it. However, there have been a few incidents where individuals under its influence have nonchalantly walked straight into heavy machinery. What course of action? So what do we do with this very dangerous drug? We could actually give it our workers, content workers, our hard workers, give them more of the drug. We get some approval with that, some manufacturing bonus, but we lose growth rating. We could also put it in railings and let people use the drug recreationally. This gives me flat approval rating. We don't lose any growth, but we also don't gain any major manufacturing bonus here. Plus one on individual uh, individualism, cultural awareness on top of that. What these awarenesses are, we are looking at later. Let's use it for recreation. Right, and with that, we are using the truck now. And as we can see, Murga 2 is now feeding my core world refuge here. So it, they're connected, right? And that means that everything that happens on Murga is kind of like pushed right over here to refuge. To refuge it has now 9.4 manufacturing bonus because it does get the three manufacturing that Murga produces on top of it, right? So we are now kind of like boosting that. However, Murga 2 is then not an independent colony and cannot really grow on its own. To bigger heights so for now i'm going to keep it here um to to feed refuge there for a few turns and then we're probably making an independent colony out of it all right let's end the turn and have a look what we find a class 2 poor planet here nothing special really uh let's move a bit further outside i should have finished also a probe at this point oh and we've also analyzed the first anomaly that is my flagship has done it, right? And we get the result then. Your flagship stumbles upon a relic from a bygone era, an enigmatic item filled with extraordinary power. This artifact presents a choice. It could be utilized to create a substantial energy surge that would benefit our shipyards. Alternatively, it could be directed to emit an aura of joy on a chosen planet. Hmm. This would enhance the spirits of the people living there and offer a short-term increase in productivity. We could boost one of my ships or we boost manufacturing to all our worlds for 20 months. I think I like this one more. Channel the artifact's energy to temporarily enhance manufacturing on our worlds. That's pretty neat. And with my flagship, we can continue to the next relic over here, some space chunk. And then there is also an artifact here which looks alive. But yeah, <laughs> it seems alive to me. Uh, let's also have a look around. My probe, what are you doing? Probe is going a bit further outside. There is a class 1 planet, so nothing special. And this very strange looking artifact. Looks like an old satellite of some sorts. Let me have another probe. Ah, in one turn it comes out. Alright. I think... What we can also do in the meantime, real quick, is I would like to, of course, settle on these other planets as well here. So S.H.I.E.L.D., for example. And we can do this by an executive order. It gives me a colony ship right away, but it reduces my approval rating by 2%. Um, it's safe to do it in the beginning because we got a pretty high approval rating. Um, and it gives me a colony ship right away, which saves me a lot of time. We're going to use this, though, once I find a better planet. Because for a smaller colony, it's not really worth it. After this probe... I would probably like to build me then another colony ship then for sure though, because I definitely want to scour the area around us. Let's finish this turn and finish this probe here as well. And with that, we can now get over here to the next star system that has a Promethean planet. So this is a special planet with a special resource on it. Promethean we can use for advanced planetary improvements once we harvest this, of course. Looking funny planet here, star. Uh, zero, zero dead walls all around us. Nothing here we can really do. The other probe over here. Durantium. And more dead planets. So this is also a special resource. Enormously strong and pliable. Durantium is required for most orbital improvements. That's something else. But I think this is the star system here already. And we move on to the next one up here. So we do have a few surrounding us. We're actually almost with our back to the end of the of the map, right? So this might be beneficial because we are not surrounded potentially by enemies. Let's end the turn and finish the research district. Perfect. With that, we get the warships, we get asteroid mining and xeno-industrialization as options. 
Uh, with that here, warships, we can build warships. Starting with that, we also, I think, gain two warships right away as a bonus. Um, or asteroid mining. This comes up again, right? Let's go for warships for the moment. And finally finish that phase. We have done this. And actually, we've finished now also all the construction on the core world. This is pretty important because now we get those bonuses in, right? With that, we immediately gain a bit of a bonus here to my income. We have grown, by the way, to five pops in the meantime. And another one is coming out in one turn. So my food consumption goes up there as well with this. Um, we also get the plus level three to research. So those districts here will be very powerful. And we also get the plus two to manufacturing for this area here. That's great stuff indeed. Mm, there's nothing for food on this planet here, unfortunately. All right, so this might be a bit tricky down the road. Let's start with some manufacturing. Um, I would probably like to use it, the forest for that because they give me the highest bonus. And manufacturing, yeah, basically leads to faster construction and also faster ship construction, which is important. Another special building we get, um, the planetary generator. It's a manufacturing improvement, massive source of power, and it boosts manufacturing once again by another plus two. So this is really great stuff. Um, if we build it here, we probably can boost these tiles here further. And I think that would be safe. Uh, we could also have it up here. Hmm, that's a tricky one. This is already getting boosted. This is getting boosted. Yeah, let's use it here on the researching tile because then at least three here get boosted by two. By two improvements, right? We don't have more space here, unfortunately. So this is turning into a manufacturing powerhouse, it seems. All right, we continue with exploration to the next star system. Ooh, class 20, excellent. Uh, a, another desert planet. Desert planets are great for manufacturing. They're not so great for making food. And in that case, we're already getting low here. This is a frozen planet. Ooh, this looks good. Does it? These worlds make good targets to colonize and then promote to a core world. This actually has a nice food production on it. So this one here, these are two very good plants that we have. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, we are finishing one colony ship in two turns. Now I would like to have my executive order with the draft colony ship. So we get this one now, but we lose 2% approval rating. And this one we can use now to immediately send up here and colonize on Schultz too. Very important, this is going to be a food production powerhouse for me. Um, probably with some manufacturing close to it. Here on Murga, yeah, this is not the best. It's a snuggler colony. Um, it's basically great for sending resources to refuge, right? Um, there's not that much here. Can we look at the planetary view of this one? I think we can't do this without having a governor. It is a shame because I would love to know its tiles. Let's just keep it like that for the moment. There's still more to discover. All right, next up, the probe has finished this system. There's nothing except the Prometheum. So I would like to go ahead immediately to this one there. All right, another class 20 excellent planets. There's the Atokarpus Virilis on it. These worlds make good targets to colonize. Um, also a class two poor mountain planet. Not so bad. The surrounding area is not this so bad. And we've also finished another survey. Independent aliens during the Dreadlord War. Previously thought to have been consumed by the passage of time, it's clear now that this is not the case. While the technology may seem a bit outdated by our current standards, the sheer size and resilience of the vessel remain impressive. That's great stuff. So we could use the raw materials of it or we could use the ship in action. We get a free constructor. Let's do this. It's great stuff because it saves us time. And I think that we have it. Yes. And constructors are great for making a star base or constructing a star base um, in strategic locations. And I think since we're also going to have a nice colony over here and over here, let's move it over here first because I do want to have a protective star base then in its surrounding. And by the way, with all the researching, also my flagship has leveled up. So we can also now finally give it an improvement. So every ship can level up getting better of course over the course of time and with this we get three options right now that we can build the rest we would need to research right and we get the crew quarters for 20% hit points 
Uh, we got the command bridge for another movement point and the communications terminal for another sensor range. Let's go ahead with the command bridge, I think, so it can move faster. This leads then also to more research, right? Crew quarters, I'm not expecting my flagship to be part of any, you know, fighting fleet, so this is not so important. Let's upgrade this one and get the movement speed out of it. And yeah, let's move to the third artifact in my star system that we can then also um, scout right away. There's nothing else here. By the way, these asteroid belts here, were they here before? I guess so. So once we get asteroid mining, we can also then harvest them and feed my, my core world there. All right, we're now building the colony ship. Important to know about the colony ship, it is actually consuming a pop, right? So this one here, if we build it, it is reducing the amount of pops that live on this planet. Um, and we are five, six actually soon. And I would like to build two more, or actually let's build two in total for now. And the executive order is available in eight more t months then that we can do. We can also do a, a telescopic takeover, by the way. This is great. This is something we need to do because with that we can um, spend 15 control points to immediately get a star system of our choice um, revealed or any part of really. Um, we are already having a probe here. We're having a probe here. So I would like to have a look at this area where we don't have a probe right now. And this looks promising. First of all, there is an AI empire now popping up, so this will be dangerous. And then we also got a new star system here with nothing really on it. But we can see that there is something else with another class 20 amazing planet over here. Ah, the race is on because of course they will also want to colonize them. And yeah, we'll just see who wins this race in the next episode of Galactic Civilizations 4 Supernova full game release. Stay tuned!